Hi again, everybody. In this lesson, we're going to be working on some uses of the date of. Uh, so we've just learned, well, we've learned a few of these in the past. So we're going to review those and also build on. This isn't going to be exhaustive. We're not at chapter 36 yet. This is only chapter 6. We're about 15-16% of our way through Shelmerdine's text and through learning most of Greek. Um, but this is going to be some more uses of the data that will get us used to where we can go and what the kind of fundamental purposes of this case are. So we remember that we have nominative, which tends to be a subject case. And it's called the nominative because it's really, it's, it's the naming case. It's what you use to give people names, to say who the subject of the sentence is. That's the nominative. And then we remember that the genitive tends to be possessive, but with prepositions such as apo, it could mean out of, or maybe from. We also had it working with x, or sometimes ek. X before vowels, ek before non-vowels, meaning from. So we had some options for genitive, and we also just, of course, had the of. Or maybe we, we want to think of it as, you know, if we had Athena in the genitive, it would be Athena's warrior, young man, army, whatever. But And then we had the accusative, which tended to be a direct object, but was also the, um, the object of preposition, prepositions, sorry, my cursive is not so good tonight, the object of prepositions dealing with motion towards. So that's what we had so far on the other cases, nominative, genitive, and I skipped dative here and then went straight to the accusative. So let's talk then about the dative. What do we have so far? Well, in terms of prepositions, so I should also say that accusative went with ace and also went with pros. Dative went with n and could mean in. That was really where we were seeing it for the most part. But we could also see it when it was what we called a dative of indirect object. And this is not, if we give a gift, if gift giving is the scenario, uh, the subject gives a gift in the direct object, that's the gift, to somebody who is an indirect object. Uh, so this is the recipient, but recipient seems kind of uh, material. That's, I'm the recipient when the UPS man comes to my door and drops off a package. Uh, it can also be the person for whom there is an interest. There is an interest. All right, interest. We got it somewhere in there. So recipients, interest, let, let's take an example. So we had already had something like this. Through all men, we are sacrificing. Lost control there a little bit. Te. Thea, we are sacrificing to the goddess. This is Shelmerdine's example. Let's do something a little bit more exciting because we do now have, you know, uh, the, what am I looking for? Neuter, neuter second declension nouns. So we had stratiotes, that was the word for soldier. What I want to say here, what I'm writing in piecewise fashion is the gifts of the soldier. This is not using the data, but this is a, an expression. So we want to say the gifts, the ones of the soldier. So we have ta dora, that's going to be our good nominative uh, neuter plural, ta dora. And then I want to say of the soldier. Of course, the soldier is hall stratiotes in the masculine, uh, but we don't need the masculine here. We need of the soldier. That's the genitive case. So let's lose all of the things that made Paul Stratiotes masculine nominative, and let's make it masculine genitive. So two masculine genitive article, and then in this case, two over here. Uh, 
um, second declension, or first declension rather, but it still ends in U. So, ta tu stratiotu dora, the gifts of the soldier. And then let's say, let's say we want to make it, we sent. Or we, well, I guess we can do we sent. We've got the heiress now. We sent the gifts of the soldier to the goddess. So we sent, this is going to be, let's get a different color out. This is going to be our main verb, which in Greek can contain the subject. The personal ending, we, contains that subject. So we're going to have the verb sending, past tense, first person, plural here. And now my, my idea of what the sentence was going to be has changed. The gifts of the soldier are now what? They're the direct object. And then, of course, of the soldier is kind of a sub-possessive in there. But do we need to change anything? The, I, before ta dora tu stratiotu, I was treating as nominative, the ta dora at least. Do we need to change it morphologically to fit this context? And the answer is no. Why? Well, because it's neuter. It's already got an ending that could be accusative, could be nominative, could be vocative. Of course, this ta is telling us it's not vocative. This ta can only be nominative or accusative plural. But anyway, we've got these options, and we don't need to change a thing to make this now, this ta tu stratiotu dora, the direct object. So let's do that. Let's put this subject verb, this aorist first person plural we sent. So what was our verb for sending? Oh, let me start by getting in the right color. That's important. So we have pempo, right? But that was the first principal part. What was the third principal part of pempo? The, the aorist, which is what we need. So of course it had a past indicative augment. It had this. But then it had a sigma added to that pi. So pi plus sigma equals psi, and that's what we get here. So a pempsamen with an alpha here. So a pempsamen, we sent one time, singular, simple past, the gifts of the soldier, and then we need to say to the goddess. Guess I need more space. Well, not too much more space. We just need to make this dative, singular, feminine. Te thea. That wasn't too bad. So this is the indirect object use. So this is use number one. But then we could also say use number two is with this preposition. And that's easy. Now we're going to learn two more uses of the dative in Greek. So use number three. One and two were old. Uh, this is the kind of metaphorical use of dative, and for this, for the moment, it's just with n, that preposition, uh, which we had used for kind of physical location before. But now we're thinking a little bit more metaphorically. It could be in time, but it could also be in abstract concepts. So really, I'm calling this number three, but it's kind of like number two point A. <laughs> it's still working with n, but now we're in a different context. Uh, so what we have uh, in Shelmerdine is this idea of educating people in wisdom. So let's change her context a little bit. Let's say the muses educated the poets in wisdom. So the muses, they're feminine objects, and they are first declension. The accent wants to fall here, but is musai long or short? Well, that's a diphthong, which would naturally be long, but because it's this alpha iota diphthong, like the omicron iota diphthong, at the end of the cent at the end of the word, that, that for the purposes of accent, that is short. So we have to not make that acute, but rather a great uh, a circumflex. So hi mu sai, the muses, and now we want to say educated. So e eh, past indicative augment, paideus. And that's our aorist tense marker. 
So that's our PIA. In the middle of all this is just our stem. So the muses, and then at this point we have past tense, aorist, now we need to make it third person plural. How do we do that? That's on in the aorist, and this is a short alpha, so we can go back here at pidosan. The muses, or we could just say muses perhaps in our English translation. Muses simply educated one time in the past, and now we want to say the poets. So what was nominative poet? This was weird. Poetes, accent on the final, which was different from polites, accent here. You can see that there's no rhyme or reason. You just need to memorize this stuff. But that's a great nominative. We don't need the nominative here. What do we need? Muses are educating. Paideo takes the accusative. So we want to say the masculine object. Oh, I should have said it was ha poetes over there. I guess Sappho or others would have been a lady poet, but we're, we're assuming, which is a safe bet to make in ancient Greek culture, that the poet is, or the group of poet, we're probably talking a ma about a man. So masculine article, where grammatical gender follows natural gender, and then poietas, and again the accent wants to fall there. I'll put this grave accent because I know we're going to be following it up with something. So the muses, educated simply in the past, past indicative augment, aorist tense marker, educate verb, third person, so this is our a personal ending. So much contained on every Greek verb. Four different bits of information that are key. So educated the poets and then we want to say in wisdom. And remember that Greek loves to use the article on kind of abstract nouns where we wouldn't necessarily use it. So Sophia, that's a what? Well this Yoda is protecting it. It's one of those epsilon iota rows that are keeping this long alpha in this context, not from turning into an eta like the article. Uh, it prevents the great vowel shift. So we have one of these ente sophia circumstances. We could also do the same thing if we want to say injustice. It would just be ente. And this would have that final eta like that, dk. Good, but let's imagine it's wisdom rather than justice. So good, this is the same thing basically as two, but now we're, we're stretching that meaning of this preposition. We're no longer strictly material, physical location. We're getting into now the kind of theoretical realm of, well, what does it mean to be in something, right? And then finally, number four, and this is going to be very important, and the Latinists among you will be happy to finally hit the means slash instrument use of a case. So in Latin, this tends to be done with the ablative. That's the fifth kind of common case that Latin has that Greek has lost for better or for worse. So if we want to educate somebody with something, um, we'll want to use a data for what's, what's being used to do the actual, um, I guess, uh, educating. Means can be a little bit vague. We, we could make it, say, like, with words, if that's going to be the means by which this education happens. Uh, it, it's through speech. Well, that's, that's not right. In a way, that's an instrument, but we could also say means. Uh, logos can go either way. Sometimes it'll be very clear. I, you know, Odysseus beat Thersites with a stick. Well, I guess that was kind of his means, but the stick was really the instrument. You can see that these, these concepts blend together. Um, but let's, let's uh, make the sentence um, the... Uh, the young men educate the soldier by means of words, or maybe persuade the soldier. Let's try that. So the young men, masculine objects, obviously, but first declension. So this looks rather feminine, but it's not hoi neanii, the young men, persuade. So that's from patho. 
That's a good first person singular ending, but we need to make it third person plural. Ooh, see? Again, remember that there'd be a, moo new, uh, a new movable there, but we're not sure if we're actually going to need that, so I'm just going to leave it in the br uh, circle brackets, I guess, parentheses as we call them in America. Uh, the young men are persuading, persuade, and then we wanted to say whom? The soldier. So that needs to be in the accusative here. Uh, so that's going to be Tawn, again, assuming that the soldier is masculine. But again, a first declension noun, stratiote. So the young men persuade the soldier, and then let's say by means of words. And we could say that that's a kind of class distinction. So we could use the article, tois logois. We could also probably drop that article and then just have through words. Good. So we've got four uses of the data. Let's scroll back up and look at them all. So number one was kind of standard issue, indirect object. We're giving a gift for somebody. This is when uh, whatever is in the data is, I'll get a bright color to overlap what we're doing, the recipient, or when there's some sort of interest relationship. Um, might not actually receive it, but um, it's being done in this person's honor, etc. That's a kind of interest relationship. So indirect object, dative. We also had it with N in a kind of locational sense. We, we are stretching that slightly with our third usage, which is this metaphorical usage of the preposition, uh, educating somebody in wisdom. Uh, it's not like there's a town named Sophia in Greece, although there might well be, and that's where the education is happening. No, it's, it's more abstract than that. And then finally, we have the means instrument. Um, this can be a little bit tricky. Where What if we used a verb that took data? Uh, you know, the young men were persuaded by the soldier with the words or by the words. These things can get a little bit iffy. But for right now, we've got it going on pretty well. I think we can be happy with our knowledge of the data. We can wrap up this one a little long. I think I'd take 17 and a half minutes to get over the data. But we have it. And we can put this one in the memory bank and move on next time uh, to finally getting to the infinitive. How we say to loosen or to send in Greek um, becomes actually more interesting than you'd think. So we'll see you then.